But let's start this morning with that major policy accomplishment for Democrats. It took them just 50 days since taking over Congress and the White House to pass the latest COVID relief bill. It's massive, not quite as big as the $2 trillion one that passed with bipartisan support last year, but this one still means financial support for Texans and for Texas cities. So we begin with Congresswoman Lizzie Fletcher. She represents parts of West and Northwest Houston, and she spoke with us from her office in Washington. Congresswoman, it's good to see you again. We haven't had you on for uh, for a, about a year, which is hard to believe, but thanks for coming back. I, the big question everyone has right now is, when is that check going to show up in my mailbox or in my bank account? Well, uh, we just passed the bill uh Wednesday, and it's gone to the president's, uh, gone for the president's signature. And so hopefully that will move as quickly as possible, uh, because we know people across the country need that help. Those checks in the mailbox, the continued unemployment checks, that was the big push to get this bill passed before March 14th, and making sure that we're doing all the things that we've been able to do over the last year. There's a light at the end of the tunnel in, when it comes to this pandemic, but we're not quite there yet. Well, let's break down some of this as well. Uh you represent uh, Houston and Harris County from, you know, parts out to the west, the Energy Corridor and uh, north and even down to Bel Air. But uh, you, you mentioned that, that your district, uh, Houston and Harris County, uh, governments there are estimated to receive about one and a half billion dollars. What specifically is that money going to be spent on? That's right. Well, there's a lot of flexibility in these funds, but what we have um, seen and, and heard over the last year is really the, the tremendous toll that this pandemic has taken on our cities and counties that really are on the front line of responding. They are the ones managing the public health response. They're the ones putting up the testing sites and now the vaccination sites. Um, and, and what we have seen and part of the intent of this bill is to make sure that all of those operations that are essential to our daily lives continue so that people can stay on the payroll, so that the sanitation workers can keep working, so that the permitting department can keep working. Um, you know, what I hear from, from some of my constituents is, you know, we, maybe somebody who's in construction might say, well, we have a project and we're actually ready to move, but we got to get a permit. So we don't want to stop anything that our state and local governments are doing from pandemic response to keeping operations going, keeping people employed, keeping city services and county services moving forward. And so, we also know that there's been a big dip in revenues for many of our uh, local jurisdictions over the last right. year. And so these funds are, are intended to help address all of the issues uh, that arise out of this COVID-19 pandemic that have affected our, our cities and counties. One thing you added to this bill here was additional incentives for, for states like Texas that have not expanded Medicaid. Uh, of course, Republicans who run this state have been re reluctant to do that, even though plenty of other Republican states have already expanded Medicaid. If, if this happens, about a million more Texans would be covered by health insurance. But what are these incentives? And, and Texas obviously would still have to bite on this. What makes you think that they might now? What we know is that about 1.4 million Texans could benefit if Texas would expand Medicaid. And so this bill provides incentives for Texas and the other states. There are about 12 states that haven't expanded Medicaid in the last decade following the Affordable Care Act. And this provides incentives to do that. And what my bill does in particular is increases the federal share for all Medicaid costs, um, increasing by 5% so that there's really an incentive to get Texas to make this decision now and to help get people covered. So it puts more money on the table for states like Texas. That's exactly right. It puts money on the table. It increases the federal match for any new expansion state. And I hope that my colleagues in Austin will look very seriously at these incentives, because, like I said, more than one million low income Texans in our states in our state would have access to health care if the legislature will expand Medicaid. Congressman Fletcher, we appreciate the time. Thank you so much. It's good to be with you.